goes. Well, if you have your Bibles, open them up to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. I'm going to start with uh, verses 23 through 25. Hey, if you guys, maybe just go in the back if you would a little bit with that. Oh, boy. There you go. All right. Perfect. We, we got to get the word out. Amen? Glory to God. Praise God. I don't mind praying. I mean, just, you know, it's all good. Uh, Psalm 37, 23 through 25. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his right hand. I have been young, and now I am old. Anybody want to confess that one in here? No. No. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. Now go with me to Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. <clears throat> and it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Today I want to talk about this. I want to talk about the keys to fulfilling your God-given destiny, your divine destiny on this earth. You know, in place of that word destiny, you could use the word uh, purpose, right? But, but for today's message, I was leaning more toward, I, I was feeling more of a leaning toward, if you know what I mean, toward the word destiny. Say destiny. destiny. I'm talking about fulfilling what we were created for. Amen? Now, that word destiny, as I said earlier, that word destiny carries some spiritual weight with it. It just feels like it drives home uh, the importance of our future and what we are to accomplish on this earth. Say destiny again. Destiny. There's something about that word. The word destiny, I like to say it this way. It does. It has inspiration. It has the presence of God attached to it. Amen? A person's destiny can be f fulfilled in a positive way by making wise decisions, and it can also be altered in a negative way by making bad decisions or by what we would say a lack of wisdom. Say wisdom. So we need to make sure that we're walking in wisdom and maintaining a spiritual mindset. Man, I got some, some spiritual bombs I'm going to be dropping in this place here, so stay tuned. But the word divine, when I say uh, divine destiny, what I'm talking about is God-given. That can only come from Him, all right? Not your fleshly desires, but rather destiny or your purpose from God, your Creator. That means then, if it's divine destiny from your Creator, that can only be fulfilled by being in right relationship with your Creator. You agree with that? Yes. All right? Uh, you must be in partnership. Oh, come on, somebody. You must be in partnership. You must cooperate with Him to fulfill your divine destiny. So number one, duh, you must be first born again. Jesus Christ must be the Lord of your life. If that hasn't happened yet, you will not fulfill your divine destiny on this earth. You must be in right standing with God, your creator through his son, Jesus Christ. Your destiny and purpose can only be defined by your creator. Did you know that? Not what someone prophesied to you. Come on, somebody. Come on. Or, or should I say prophylied? Right? There's, come on. Our destiny or purpose you could say it this way, is in seed form. And the only way for that seed to crack open and begin to grow is to be in Christ. Without Jesus Christ being Lord or at the center of your life, that seed is there, but it remains dormant until Jesus Christ is Lord of your life. Now that is why you see unbelievers using their, their, their natural giftings and talents for the kingdom of darkness. Right? 
Just because someone's an unbeliever doesn't mean there's not gifts and talents from God there. But the problem is they're using it for the wrong kingdom. Okay? So if you take Jesus out of the equation of your life, you will never be on track to fulfill your destiny and what God created you for. The main purpose that God created humans, you all remember this? I say it all the time. The main purpose that God created us as humans was for meaningful fellowship with him. Then the fall happened. Now, number one, the first thing is still maintaining that relationship, but now we have a mission to advance the kingdom of God. You see, before the fall, we didn't have that mission. It was just easy. The curse wasn't on the earth. You getting it? But the first thing needs to still be the first thing, and that's to be in right relationship with the Lord. You following me? So if we're going to fulfill our God-given destiny, we must maintain communication, communication with him and obey what he tells us to do. And it's not automatic. It's not automatic. You must yield your free will to his will. Right? Okay, go to Proverbs 16.9. Let's jump in here. Proverbs 16, verse 9, I want to look at. Oh, this is, this is a good, this is a message that is just going to refocus us on the right, on the main thing. So we can keep the main thing, the main thing, all right? Proverbs 16, verse 9, it says this, A man's or a person's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. So here's what this means. The Holy Spirit made this so, so clear to me. Are you ready for this? He said this, he said, our heart must desire, our heart must be set on, our heart must be motivated to fulfill our divine destiny. And he said this, it must be bent toward God's plan. It, ma- it must be bent toward God's plan. If it's bent away from it, forget it. There needs to be a hunger, there needs to be a desire in each of us to fulfill God's plan, or it's not going to happen. It, you know, it's on purpose Christianity. It just doesn't, you're not going to trip into the destiny of God. You're, it's not going to happen. It must be on purpose. Say on purpose. And when our heart is properly set or aligned, he said this, that is when God, when he is able to direct our steps. Did you, hear the, did you hear all the words I just said? Because one word can change the whole thing. When our heart is properly set, focused on him, that is when, here's the word, God is able. He is able to direct our steps. Now, remember in a couple sermons ago, I don't even remember when, I don't even remember what I ate last night for dinner, but remember a couple weeks ago, uh, sometime. I, I said, meditating on the word of God and his kingdom sets our course in our heart. It's, it's like programming a GPS of where you want to go. Well, I got a GPS in my car, but guess what? It doesn't do you any good until you put a destination in it. Now it can start giving you instructions. And that's the same thing here. All right, your heart must be set on. Your heart must desire to fulfill the destiny and purpose of God in your life. If that's not there, come on, your GPS is not programmed with the proper destination. So if you are truly focused on fulfilling your your own fleshly will, listen to this, God is restricted. Come on, I said he's restricted from ordering your steps. He's restricted. You're keeping him out of it. Why? Because God is a gentleman. You do know that, right? There must be cooperation. So you must have a heart connection. Or you could say, what's a heart connection? Let's just break it down even more. Ready? You must have a spiritual mindset for God to order your steps. Or else you will miss it. You will not recognize him, and you will lack discernment in your life. And you will lack spiritual sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Say awareness. You've got to have an awareness of him. And if you're off doing your own thing, you're off trying to fulfill your own fleshly will, there's no awareness. You're focused on the wrong thing instead of him. So I, I like to say it this way. God is the greatest dispatcher in the universe. 
but his instructions must be heard, discerned, and obeyed. I used to, I was an aircraft dispatcher for nine years at Pontiac Airport, and I could look up numbers for the aircraft and tell the pilots what they need to do, right? Trying to keep them safe, but uh, they didn't have to follow, they, they had to choose to follow my directions. I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek tongue in because if they didn't, they're fired, but you understand what I mean. They could choose to obey what I was giving them or they could choose not to. And God is the greatest dispatcher in the universe, but his instructions are worthless unless you're willing to obey them. The Holy Spirit is always there trying to give us discernment. He's always there trying to give us instructions to keep us on the road to our destiny. Think about that. But, discer but discernment and instructions that are not obeyed, I can't say it enough, uh, that are not obeyed are worthless to us. They must be obeyed. Many Christians are trusting people and, the, and flesh and blood more than the Holy Spirit that knows all. Right? I mean, you should be close enough in your walk with the Lord that if someone tells you something, you should know, you should have an inkling if that's from the Holy Ghost or not. Hello, somebody. Now, let, now we're getting into spiritual maturity stuff, right? You got to know. You should be close enough, have a close enough relationship, be in that connection, that heart connection, communication, that if someone says something to you that's of the Lord or not of it, you should, you should have an inclination on the inside of you. Amen? Just because, listen, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that God is going to bless and put his stamp of approval on everything you do. Now, that's kind of news to a lot of Christians because they think, well, I can just do what I want. God's just going to bless it. No, that's not, he, he is under no obligation to bless flesh. Listen, and also this, the blessings of God are not always world, the worldly kind of blessings that are flesh desires, like things, right? Remember, it says you have not because you asked amiss. What does that mean? You're asking them out of your own fleshly desire, right? The wrong motive. But so like the blessings of God, sure, God can give you things, but don't, don't be focused on that worldly stuff because his presence and favor are blessings that the world can't give and the world cannot receive, amen? The word of God reveals this, and I heard it, I, I heard it spoken today, and it, I know I'm on track, all right, because the prophetic words that were spoken are absolutely in line with what's on these 10 pages. The Word of God reveals that you will be persecuted for doing the will of God, right? And, and the Word of God even goes a step further. Not only will you be persecuted, but when you're persecuted for Christ, you are blessed, my friend. You are blessed. Oh, come on. Be very careful. Here's what the Holy Ghost said to tell you. Be very careful what you label as a success or failure. Because many times we're applying worldly standards and not the standards of the word of the, the kingdom of God or the word of God. So the key to walking in the blessing of God for your life is obedience to the word of God. Listen, not just that and to the personal instructions from the Holy Ghost for your life. Now, that sounds so simple, right? Bear with me. I got to break it down to let, make this last a little bit longer here. But listen, <clears throat> remember, I told you, I told you before, in the past, just because something may be good, it's not necessarily God. All right? John Bevere has a book that says that. It may be good, but it's not God, Right? There may be a wrong timing issue for you. It may be something that's beyond your calling at the present time. Many factors could be the issue, right? If something seems good, pray about it. And you know what? If you don't have that check yet, continue with the plans until you feel that check in your spirit or the lack of peace on the inside. The moment you feel that check, back out. The mo Listen, come on. The moment you feel that check, stop the forward movement. Listen to this. Many people continue moving forward with the plan because 
uh, they continue to move forward without a plan, without peace. Because they are avoiding the embarrassment of backing out and what it looks like to other people. And then it causes many more problems that makes Christians look foolish. Well, that one, that one fell like a lead balloon. Oh, great, great, thank you. We've all done it. We've all done it, right? That's why it's so important to pray about things before doing them. And to be dead to your flesh, say, I got to die to my flesh. Yes. Uh, thank you, you too. Now, and, and, and not caring if it makes you look foolish to other people. It all comes down to this. Listen to this. Are you building the kingdom of God or are you building your own fleshly kingdom? That's what it comes down to. Don't care what about, about what other people think of you or judge you. Care only about what God is telling you to do and how he feels about it. That's true wisdom. Say wisdom. In fact, listen to this. Listen to this. God will honor you backing out of something that wasn't his plan more than you continuing to advance your own plans. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm speaking to somebody. Remember how I had that vision about that track going around and there's one gate open. This is your chance to back out and get back in on the track. Come on, somebody. God, uh, uh, listen, I said it a minute ago, I want to say it again. God is under no obligation to bail you out of trouble that your own pride has caused. Let me say that one more time. That's just too good right now. God is under no obligation to bail you out of trouble that your own pride has caused. Humility to take responsibility for your own mistakes and to make course corrections for the kingdom of God. Those are the things that will be blessed. See, sometimes we just got to make a course correction. Not a, it might not be a big one. It's just a small course correction. But it puts you back on track with your destiny. Amen? Remember this. Let's make it real simple. Here's, here's the lit, litmus test right here. Remember this. The goal in this life, the goal in this life is to hear Jesus say this when you get to heaven. Well done, good and faithful servant. That's the goal. That's it. If you will keep that in your heart with every decision that you make, that's a pretty good safeguard. And a good, listen to this, a good and faithful servant obeys instructions, listen, but not just obeys instructions, but has pure motives in his or her heart. God deals, listen, God deals with pure motives. He, in faithfulness, deals with our actions. Oh, I'm sorry, good, good deals with pure motives. Say good. That's talking about our motives, right? And faithful deals with the actions. See, you can have actions, but not a good motive. Are you following me? You can have a good motive, but you didn't follow through with the, good, with the faithful action. You need both. All right, now, I laid a foundation. Now the truth bombs are really going to start to flow. Are you ready? I want to give you some points that will help you to fulfill your divine destiny. The first point on how to fulfill your divine destiny is this. Listen, now pay attention. It is to be productive and diligent in your present calling and present position. Where you are at right now, you better be productive and diligent. Listen to this. Being productive in your present calling and position, the Holy Ghost said this to me very clearly. He said it's training in the journey for your next level of promotion. Oh, come on, somebody. I don't care where you're working. I don't care where you're at right now. You better stay faithful, productive, and diligent in it because someone's watching. And I'm not talking about your boss or manager. Many Christians don't understand this because they're very short-sighted. They're, they're just thinking about the now. They're not thinking about the consequences about the future. If you're not faithful in where you're at right now in life, you are not ready for promotion. If you're not faithful where you're at right now, you're not ready for a promotion. 
Now, when I say promotion, I'm not just talking in the natural. I'm talking about spiritual promotion. I'm not talking about spiritual. I'm talking about in the natural, all of it. Say all of it. Say he's talking about all of it. Here's what you got to understand. This is a spiritual mindset right here. Are you ready? Promotion comes from the Lord. Promotion comes from the Lord. And he is paying very close attention to your attitude, words, and how you treat other people. He said it this way, on the way up the ladder. Say on the way up the ladder. This is why God's people went around the mountain for 40 years without a breakthrough or that gate opening into the promised land. Oh, come on, somebody. This is why breakthrough didn't happen. They murmured, they complained, they worshiped idols, their attitude was hor horrible, and they were filled, in a nutshell, with disobedience to the Lord, right? Oh, now, here's what I heard, don't quote me, Google it yourself, but the trip to the promised land should have taken, I thought I read, like 13 days. A 13-day journey turned into 40 years because of hardness of heart. They weren't ready for that promotion. God's, because if, they would have, if God would have let them go into that promised land with how their heart was, they would have messed it all up. They would have messed it all up. They would have messed up the plan of God. Plan of God. If you will always remember to do what is right in the eyes of the Lord, it's not a matter of if promotion will come. It's a matter when it's going to take place. Amen? Not if, when. Now, that is why the Word of God tells us, listen to this, that's why the Word of God tells us to work at our jobs as if we're working unto the Lord. In other words, he, this is what God's saying. God, man, this is such a spiritual. You've got to have a spiritual mindset or you're just going to tune this out and you're going to go around the mountain another 40 years. Are you ready? In other words, this is what God is saying. He's saying, take that horrible boss and manager out of the equation for your potential promotion. They are ultimately not involved in that decision. Hello, somebody. God is telling us to always do the right thing. Always choose righteousness. Because ultimately, God is able to turn and shift the hearts of those horrible bosses and horrible managers toward you. Now, let me show you something. Go to Proverbs 16, verse 7. I'm going to prove it to you in this one verse. All right? Proverbs 16, 7. Oh, this is so good. Lord, give us a spiritual mindset. We wonder why so many Christians are just basically living in the curse. You know, the Word of God gives us instructions, and if we don't follow them, there's consequences, right? Here it is, Psalm 16, 7. When a man or person's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Oh, well, I don't know about you, but I've had some bosses and managers that were enemies, Amen. Let's just be real about it. There's some real jerks out there in the work space. Right? Oh, come on. Quit, quit trying to be holier than thou in here. I know you're all about ready to stand up and shout. Yeah. But this verse is telling us that if we have, that we have only one to please, and that is our Heavenly Father. And when he is pleased with us, it says that his favor is upon us. And then he is able, I said he is able to shift circumstances in our favor. Why isn't it shifting in your favor? Probably because you're word cursing the whole thing with your negativity. Now, if, now, if, we're, if we are living in sin, God is unable to intervene, right? I mean, if you're going to spew out word curses and all these things. So what we're doing when we do that, we're binding the Holy Spirit. Oh, he just said he can bind the Holy Ghost. Yeah, 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 you can. You can bind the Holy Ghost from blessing you. You can bind the Holy Ghost from walking in, in, in being on your team. <laughs> Come on, somebody. 
And you're binding ministering spirits. You're binding angels from working on your behalf because God can't bless sin. That's, that's just, it's an impossibility. With God, all things are possible. Well, use that in context. God cannot bless sin. Or without faith, it's impossible to please God. Well, I thought all things were possible with God. That's why you gotta rightfully divide the word. Are you following me? So listen, so our thoughts, words, and actions determine if God and angels are able to step in and go to battle for us, right? Yeah, from this day forward, you need to know and understand this. Your boss and manager, all right, is your heavenly father. That's your boss, that's your manager, right? I bet for many Christians, your work ethic and your attitude would be very different on the job. And though, guess what would happen? Those bosses and managers, those horrible bosses and managers, they would start to take notice of the change in you. All the positive changes. And guess what? Their heart's going to be softened. And, and so this is what I'm trying to say. Are you ready? You cannot lose or go backwards if you're obeying and pleasing God. You cannot lose. And doing that, doing that, obeying God is going to keep you on course to fulfill your divine destiny in this life. Walking in obedience to God will guarantee, this is what he told me, are you ready? How many of you like divine appointments? When God does a divine appointment in your life, he said, walking in obedience to him will guarantee that you will never miss out on a divine appointment in your life. But sin will cancel that divine appointment. Think about that. So again, your destiny does not depend on your boss. Your destiny does not depend on your manager or any other person in your life. It depends totally on your personal obedience to the word of God and to personal instructions for your life from the Holy Spirit that lives in you. All right, you get that? Can I move on to the next point? Here we go. The next point of how to fulfill your divine destiny. And, and these kind of tie in, but just work with me here, all right? <laughs> the next point of how to fulfill your divine destiny is to resist the shortcut mentality. Oh, come on now. Re, do everything you can to resist the shortcut mentality that leads to compromising your morals and walk with God. Now, look at Psalm, uh, or Proverbs 16, 8. But Psalm 16 is just full of verses about what I'm preaching today. So we're just camping out in uh, Proverbs 16 here for a while, if you don't mind. Proverbs 16, 8, look at this. It says, better is a little with righteousness than vast revenues without justice. Isn't that powerful? See, that, that's a spiritual mindset, right? See, Joe Biden and them, they haven't learned that one yet, right? Taking bribes from other countries. They, they haven't learned this one yet. Oh, come on. Come on. You got to call them out, right? Listen to this now. The key point here, the key point is to live and walk in righteousness. Righteousness is this, when it comes to our actions, doing, the, doing things God's way. Doing things God's way. See, your sin will eventually find you out if it's not repented in your life. It will. You might think that you're home free, nobody knows what's going on, but... Listen, I don't know. You've been watching all the scandals coming out with pastors and people in the body of Christ. Things are getting exposed, right? If not repented, it will eventually catch up to you. So we are constantly activating the law of sowing and reaping in our life. We are constantly reaping what we have been sowing, sin or righteousness, right? Blessing or cursing. All right, so shortcuts then are not the, ble uh, the best plan of action, especially when you're willing to lower your moral standards to accomplish it. Well, pastor, should I be doing this? I, well, are you lowering any moral standards? Well, yeah, I gotta kind of lie about this. Yeah, that's not the Lord. 
right? Here's what the Holy Spirit showed me in connection with this one. Get ready. Patience. Say patience. Patience is a key in the life of a Christian. It's key. God is working on you and in your life. You've got to understand this through a process. See, when you got born again, you weren't automatically made perfect. Sorry. Right? God is working on you. He's working on me in this life through a process. A process means over a period of time. You must trust God in the process. And that means to have faith in him and to choose to believe. You gotta choose to know, believe, and understand that God has not forgotten about you with whatever you're going through. So don't exit off of that highway of holiness. The highway of holiness is the highway to your destiny. Listen to this. We need to, at all costs, resist the temptation to fall into the flesh and to take matters into our own hands. It will always lead to disappointment. It will always lead to destruction in our life. God will take you around that same mountain again. You fail to test? No problem. God's, uh, God loves retest. He says, no, oh, you're not ready for the next level yet. Your breakthrough's hindered. The journey around that mountain, who wants to stop going around that mountain? Listen to this. The journey around that mountain in the wilderness stops when you understand the importance and lesson of obedience to God. That's it. That's it. That's God's waiting for you to acknowledge. God, I've been doing things my own way. I am sorry. I repent. Forgive me, Lord. That's when that gate opens and he says, now you can go into your road to destiny. Glory to God. But you must pass the test to move to the next level toward your divine destiny. Your divine destiny will never be fulfilled without a positive outlook on patience and allowing God to do his perfect work in you. It just won't, all right? Now, here's what you need to know. Some of you think, well, I'm never gonna hit my, des my divine destiny because I've done too many things in your past. You wanna know what the Holy Ghost said to me? He said, I already factored in your past. <laughs> oh, come on, somebody. This is good news for some people here. God says, I've already factored in your past. If you have breath in your lungs and you're able to repent and come back to me, that road to your destiny is still waiting for you. He's already factored in your past. Man, does that make you feel good? God knew the beginning from the end. He factored it in. Wow. Some of you really, really need to meditate on that right now. When you go home, when you're in bed tonight, you really need to, God factored it. Stop condemning yourself. Condemnation is saying this. When, when a building gets condemned, it's saying that building's no longer good for its purpose. So when you're self-condemning yourself, you're saying, I'm no good. I'm no good, no longer good for God's purpose. And that's a lie from the pits of hell. God didn't slap any con condemnation sign on you. That's the devil influencing you to get off the highway of holiness and off the highway to your destiny. So listen, don't get so caught up in the works of ministry more than your pure relationship with God. Are you hearing me? Don't get caught up in works of ministry just over pure relationship because you gotta understand this, an effective powerful ministry is simply this. It's the overflow that comes from your dynamic and intimate personal relationship with God. Eventually, you're going to dry up. If you're not maintaining that intimate personal walk with the Lord, you're going to dry up. I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to I don't want a hype. I don't want a counterfeit hype. By the way, you, you can spot counterfeit hypes in ministries, can't you? I mean, if you have any kind of walk with the Lord of discernment, you can spot it. I don't want hype. I don't want counterfeits. I want a, the pure thing. And if you want the pure thing, you've got to press in personally 
in your personal walk with the Lord. Amen? Not just to be seen by other people, not to be noticed. Come on, somebody. See, here is one minister said in the past, he said, get on fire to God and people will come to watch you burn. Get on fire for God and that will draw them like a mosquito. They'll want to see. And that's when they're going to get born again. That's when they're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. That's when healing, miracles, signs, and wonders are going to happen. Amen? Here's the deal. Listen to this. If God were to give you a promotion now, and you're not ready for it, it will end up in a mess because you still may need, listen, you still may need emotional healing and work on your character that will cause you to maintain and prosper in that promotion. So God is actually, some of y'all are mad at God, but God's saying, look, listen, you know, you, you gotta trust me on this because if I let you go, if I let the leash go and let you go on this, it's gonna be a mess. It's going to be a mess. Now, here's, listen to this. The, the Holy Spirit gave me this to share with you about this. So this is what he said. He said, don't run ahead of God, all right? And it, in what the Holy Spirit gave me, it, he brought to my remembrance about when I played football in high school, all right? I was a running back in high school. Hard to believe, right? I don't know. Okay. And listen, here, the temptation was, as a running back in football, is to immediately run into the spot without first allowing the offensive line to make the proper blocks. Oh, some of you are getting it already. I see light bulbs going off. Listen to me. The key was to get the handoff and allow the play to develop a little bit and allow the offensive line to open up a hole for me to run through. Now, here's the deal. There's some people on our team that would totally ignore where the coach told them to run. And they would run just like a wild person with no purpose. They would completely ignore it. They were running without purpose and they didn't gain any yards. In fact, they would lose yards. But when they followed the proper instructions and allowed the offensive line to go ahead of them, the play would develop as intended and there would be a, come on, breakthrough and you would gain a lot of yards. But guess what it took? Patience. So the same, and let me tie that into the Christian walk. The same is true for us as Christians in the kingdom of God. Don't force your way through something, but rather allow the play to develop. Allow the offensive line of the Holy Ghost and, your, and the angels of God to go before you and open up a hole for you to run through. Are you getting it? We must learn to understand and value the patience in the kingdom of God. We must learn to run. This is what he said. We must learn to run with purpose as Christians. There's too many people running around like a chicken with their head cut off. Right? They're running around with no purpose, no direction. We must learn to run with purpose, with a divine plan for our life. And those people that are running without purpose, they're failing to gain ground or yardage for the kingdom of God on this earth. God, this is what he said, God can do more with your patience than he can do with your fleshly mindset to force your way through something that's not there. You know what? Here's what he's, uh, this is what he just spoke to me on the inside. He said, it's better to err on the side of being overly patient than running without purpose. Oh, come on, somebody. Some of y'all don't like that, but that's what he said. It's better to err more, to be more overly patient than not in doing damage for the kingdom of God. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. That's, that's powerful. And it's so against our fleshly mindset because we always feel like we gotta do something. We gotta be doing something. No, you don't. Get in the presence of God. This is what you need, you know, 
it shouldn't, this is the fleshly mindset. I'm so busy, I don't have time to pray. A spiritual mindset says, I have so much to do, I can't afford not to pray. I can't afford not to be in his presence. It's better to be overly patient than run without purpose. Trust me. Wow, I just heard this. He said, tell them not to worry because in their patience, when it's time for them to move, I will tell them to move. I will tell them to move and they won't miss it. Because here, because in your patience, thank you, Holy Ghost, this is just flowing. In your patience, there's peace. Yes. And you can hear his voice clearer. Yes. You're more focused on, on receiving the, the visions that he's giving you and hearing his voice. Patience comes from a place of peace. But many Christians, listen, we don't do that. I've been there. You operate in kamikaze. Right? <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say it. I've done it many times in my life. Uh, and, then, and then you sit back, you know, then, then mistakenly you sit back and say, God, why didn't you do bless it? What are you? And he's like, I didn't tell you to do it. I didn't tell you to. He just shrugs his shoulders and say, well, did you, did you learn your lesson? <laughs> yep, I did. And I do it again. So you will never fulfill divine destiny without patience being active in your life. Patience, he said this, patience being connected with, continuing to be diligent where you are at currently. With God, there is purpose in your patience. When you're truly seeking God, there is purpose in your patience. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Lord. The next point. The next point of how to fulfill your divine destiny is to not allow dis disappointment and discouragement to cause you to quit. You must resist that fleshly, that demonic mindset and influence. Don't you dare quit. You need to understand that you are falling right, when, you, when you're saying you're going to quit, you're falling right into the will and the playbook of the enemy. Disappointment and discouragement. Listen to me. If you're, you got breath in your lungs, disappointment and discouragement will come knocking on your door sometime. Here's what you got to not do. Don't open the door. Don't open the door and don't let it get in your heart. When that comes knocking, the first place that disappointment and dis discouragement comes knocking, you want to know where? In your thought life. That's why you're supposed to take those vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Almighty God, that's where you kick it out. Your door is your soul, your thought life. And if you meditate on that thing for 17 seconds or more, Come on, somebody. You welcome that thought in, and it starts going down the steps into your heart. That's when you make an appointment with us for emotional healing and deliverance. <laughs> Don't let it get into your heart. Don't let it get into your heart. Look at Proverbs 13, 12 real quick here. I'm almost done. Almost done. Proverbs 13, 12. It says, hope deferred or turned away makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. So hope deferred or hope not received in your life makes the heart sick. That's when depression, anxiety, all of these things start to fill your life, right? We've all, we've all been there. But it says, when that desire comes, it's a tree of life, a tree of life that will bear good fruit, that will be a blessing to many people in your life. That tree of life, that fruit from that tree of life, guess what? It's not for you. It's for you to bless other people with. Now listen to me. Listen to me. 
This is saying that we have a choice. We can receive hope or we can reject it. In other words, this is really what it's saying in a nutshell. Say nutshell. God can turn any situation around. There is hope for every situation. And he had me tack this on it. Are you ready? Even after a tragedy in your life. Even after a tragedy in your life. There is no situation that's out of God's reach that he can't turn around for good. Romans 8, 28, right? But we must choose to receive hope. If, if hope can be deferred, then it can be received. Right? It, it's, it's a spiritual mindset and focus to look beyond the circumstances of the natural realm. Again, you're choosing to believe that God has a future and a hope for you. you got to choose to believe it. Uh, the disappointment and discouragement that we have in our life, it's not God's fault. So number one, this is what you need to do. You need to stop blaming God for your problems. Stop blaming God for your problems. He has nothing to do with it. Our Heavenly Father, He's a good Father. Amen? If disappointment and discouragement... Has, has gripped your heart today, lean into your heavenly father. Lean into him and allow a realization, a revelation of his love and care for you. Dissolve those negative emotions. Encourage yourself in the Lord. You know what that means? Preach to yourself. Preach to yourself. The only way, this is what the Holy Spirit said. He said the only way we will lose in this life and fail uh, to fulfill our divine destiny as a Christian is if we give up and turn our backs on God. That's the only way. If you, if you don't do that, you're, gonna, you're set up for victory. In fact, it's already been won. You gotta just walk in it. You, you gotta come to the place of understanding this. Disappointment and discouragement, it really is a form of deception. It's a form of deception. Now, listen to this. We must learn to recognize. This is, again, I'm going into spiritual maturity. Are you ready for this? I need your, your mature spiritual ears to listen. Are you ready? We must learn to recognize a season of something taking place in our life rather than falling into hopelessness, depression, and discouragement. Spiritual maturity in your life will cause you to recognize a season. Say season rather than a life sentence of disappointment and discouragement. Just because you had dis disappointment and discouragement in your life, it's not a life sentence. You've got to understand it's only a season. Seasons always change. Amen? Even if that season, boy, that seems long. I know winters in Michigan can seem long. I know you love, win you love winters, don't you, Barry? <laughs> but they can seem a little lengthy at times. But eventually spring comes. Seasons in your life will change. Where you're at right now, if you're in a tough situation, you're not, it's not always going to be this way. If you, if, you, if you latch on to the Lord. Amen? Seasons change. Life, life is filled. Life is filled with mountaintops and life is filled with valleys. Amen? Here's what the Holy... I'm going to drop some spiritual bombs, so get ready. Say, listen to me. How you handle the valleys in your life will determine the quality of your life. How you handle the valleys in your life, the low points, will determine the quality of your life. Mountaintops are easy to embrace. They're great. They're wonderful. They make you feel amazing with positive emotions, right? But valleys, on the other hand, they require obedience to God. They require faith and spiritual vision to press through that dark tunnel when you, when you can't, you're dealing with this discouragement and disappointment. They're harder. They're challenging. And here, listen to this. Oh, the Holy Spirit said this to me. You got to catch this now. You ready? The enemy is trying to separate you from fulfilling your divine destiny within the valleys. In the valleys of your life, that, the enemy sees that and he goes, oh, yeah, oh, I got him now. Listen, listen to me now. The enemy is trying to separate you from fulfilling your divine destiny in the valley, valleys. But the Holy Spirit said this on the opposite side of the coin. Are you ready? 
The enemy will try to pump you up with pride and self-reliance in the mountaintops of your life. The enemy, either way, the enemy is trying to infiltrate. He's trying to contaminate every area of your life on the mountaintop with pride in the valley to get you to quit. So that's why we need to be sober. We need to be aware. We need to be vigilant. Because the enemy is going to try to come whether you're on the mountaintop or you're in the valley. If the kingdom of darkness can't stop you from getting born again, which they can't, their next best option is for you is to try to influence you not to fulfill your divine purpose and destiny in God. The last point I want to share with you and then we're done. The last point of how to fulfill your destiny your divine destiny is to do this. Evaluate your life experiences and lessons that you have learned from them and minister to others. Don't ever be ashamed of your past. Use it, use it to learn lessons for the present and for the future. You, use your testimony to lead others to Jesus. Some of, some of the life experiences that you had were maybe, maybe from your own bad decisions, right? But some other things that happened in your life, you had absolutely no control over. Either way, use them to flip the script of, of the enemy. Use them to flip that script from the enemy and to help others, amen? To minister to others. Keep, this is what the Holy Ghost said. He said, keep the ministry ship moving forward. And as you do that, the Holy Spirit will begin to steer you in the proper direction to fulfill your divine destiny. I feel the anointing right now. Listen to this. Out of the good and the bad parts of your life, none are wasted. God will use it all to advance his kingdom as a Christian. And as you keep moving forward, as you keep sharing your testimony and ministering to others, your spiritual gifts, your natural gifts will begin to rise to the surface and you'll be able, able to identify your calling like never before. But you've got to keep the ministry ship moving. You can only turn a moving ship. The enemy is trying to throw shame on you about your past because the enemy knows the power of a testimony, of a changed life by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. The kingdom of darkness wants you to stay silent because then the kingdom of God does not get advanced. People won't be set free. Church, it's time to reconnect refocus and realign ourselves with our God-given destiny this morning. Nobody or nothing can keep you from fulfilling that except for you yourself. <clears throat> Stop blaming the enemy. This is about decisions. You're in the valley of decision this morning. Don't ever give up. Don't ever throw in the towel. Stay strong. Keep the faith. If we will obey the word of the living God and the personal leading and instructions from the Holy Ghost on the inside, we will not miss one divine appointment and we will make full proof of our life and ministry on this earth. And as we are fulfilling our divine destiny, we will be making the maximum impact for the Lord Jesus Christ on this earth. Let's stand up in this place. Prayer team, come on forward. Hallelujah. Now, maybe there's someone in this place. You have never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life. You got the seed of the, your God-given destiny. Oh, it's in there. It's spiritually speaking, it's in there, but it's dormant. It's not moving. It's not gonna get cracked open until you make Jesus Lord of your life. If you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, and you're ready to step into your divine, God-given destiny and purpose. Uh, I want you to come forward and pray with one of our prayer team members. And you will see, as you pray that prayer, and you have put your faith in Jesus Christ, you'll feel it on the inside. That born-again experience. You'll feel that sin nature start to get out of that spirit, man. And that seed will start to be cracked. And a tree of life will start to grow. And you'll be a blessing to many.
not to mention you don't know when you're going to take your last breath. You need to make Jesus Lord and Savior of your life today. Now, maybe more than not, there's more in here today that you feel like you've been going around that mountain, you've been walking around that track, and that gate was, has not been open because you've been walking in disobedience. You've been trying to do things your own way. But today, while you feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you feel a conviction from the Holy Spirit, and you can feel a gate open today. If you want to rededicate your life, if you want to get back on track on that highway of holiness to your destiny, your God-given destiny, I want you to come forward and just talk and pray with one of our prayer team members and tell them, I'm getting back in line with my divine destiny today. Maybe there's someone in here you've never um, received the Holy Spirit baptism. You've never prayed in tongues. You never flowed in the gifts of the Spirit. You want to learn more about that. You want, you want to receive the Holy Spirit baptism. I want you to come forward. If you need prayer for anything else today, just come forward. We'll stay as long as possible. Father, I pray for each and every one in this place right now. I pray you would encamp them with your holy angels. I pray, Lord God, that you would show them the importance of waiting on you, the importance of patience, and that, Lord God, it would be a patience where they are faithful where they're at, but they're giving you time to go before them, to make the way and the path open and clear, Lord God. And I pray that you would bless them. You would provide every need for them, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I bless each and every one of them. And everybody said... Have a blessed week. Love you all.